It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor, and these soccer athletes and fans, we're all neighbors this afternoon here at Wingard Field on the campus of Creighton Durham Hall. The Creighton Durham Hall Raiders at 8 3 0 host last year's bronze medalists in Class 2A, the Egan Wildcats. I'm Mike Peden, all by myself talking to myself. That's Chaos Theory. And anytime Creighton Durham Hall is on the schedule, you know what that means. A heavy dose of Paige Peltier. She leads the state in scoring 28 goals. She had a highly productive set of games recently. She has scored in nine of 11 games this season, four hat tricks, and picked up six goals in a 9-0 win over Forest Lake. Egan running into a little bit of a bump. Egan at 6-5-2. They won five of their first six games to start the season. Since then, they have won just once out of their last seven. They've lost five, and they also had a 1-1 draw with Shakopee. So Creighton Durham Hall, 8-3-0. Egan, 6-5-2. For Creighton Durham Hall and Rosie Malone Pavoni, the head coach, the question for this Raiders team, is this the year they can get out of Section 6? Why Zeta stopped them in their tracks a year ago. Creighton Durham Hall will wear the purple kits. Egan wearing the white with green numbers. And the official, the head official, getting himself in position. We're waiting to get this match underway. Some other players to keep an eye on for Creighton Durham Hall. Amy Fiedler, number 13. She has 14 assists on the season. And for Egan, Morgan Eckerly, Emily Cronkite, Taylor Grebin, Katie Connolly, and Olivia Miller. They are going to be some of the players to watch. Egan. As we said, a bronze medalist last year. They knocked off Stillwater in the state third place game in Class 2A. But an all new coaching staff. They're all U of M graduates. All played for the Gophers. And they're led by Sherry Lenz. And that's Olivia Calla who gets a save there. Egan with the first attack. This Egan team, I had a chance to chat with Sherry Lenz before the game. She told me this Egan team, a lot of younger players, but they like to emphasize a quick possession style of play. They want to use their speed, and their 6-5-2 record, a little deceiving. If you look at their last seven games, all but one of them were one goal games. One nothing lost to Rosemount. One nothing lost to Prior Lake. One nothing lost to Minneapolis Southwest. One nothing lost to Lakeville South. They beat Farmington one nothing and had a one one tie with Shakopee. So defensively, they've done their job. It's executing on offense that has proven difficult over the last few games for the Wildcats. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, this is the first of two soccer games that will take place today. Flag went up. Who was offside? Flag went up for a considerable amount of time, and I saw Creighton Durham Hall. They were still playing. That was interesting. So the flag went up, and I don't know if anyone spotted it or if they were waiting to see who would take over, but rather delayed offside call there. But we're back to action. As you can see, Wingard Field, not the most spacious of facilities. Creighton Durham Hall, the private Catholic school. They're getting an addition to their Joe Maurer Fieldhouse. They're going to add a state-of-the-art lobby. Egan looking for an attack there, number eight. Julia Barger, one of the players to watch and that soccer ball went into the driveway of a resident. It's going into the alley. I'm sure they're used to that by now. <laughs> but a perfect day for outdoor soccer. Temperature at our last check, 58 degrees. Feels a little warmer under the sun. Not too hot, not too cold. Can't beat a day like this. Creighton Durham Hall throw in. 
And we'll try again. But we'll go the other way. Here's Barger. She's been trying to get the Egan attack going. And Sherry Lenz told me this was going to be a tough game for the Wildcats. As we said, Creighton Durham Hall 8-3-0. Another save for Olivia Calla. And on the season, Calla 837 save percentage. 77 saves on the year. Well, Creighton sends it over to the Egan side, and that will be picked up by Egan's keeper, number one, Erica Collins. So Egan taking over. Creighton Durham Hall, their three losses came to White Bear Lake, a team that is a dark horse, but a big threat perhaps in Section 4 AA. A 5 1 loss to Hill Murray, one of the top teams in Class A, and a 4 1 loss to Andover. The Huskies, also a top 10 team in Class 2A. Creighton Durham Hall not ranked. If there's one fault for the Raiders, well, Paige Peltier is not one of them. Look at her bring the ball up. Tries to find a centering pass option. She does. Shot. Save! Erica Collins with a big save. Bridget Tierney had a wide open look. She will concede a corner, but a big time save by Erica Collins. And it's on the near side. That's number 13 putting the ball in play, Amy Fiedler. And that's Creighton Durham Hall getting on the board, so the set piece pays off. Amy Fiedler, as we said in the open, 14 assists, and she picked up one there. Well, Creighton Durham Hall must have heard me when I was about to say their one fault was outside of Paige Peltier. Not a lot of goal scores, but Ellie Wanuka gets the Raiders on the board in the fifth minute, sixth minute. So unofficially, that is Fiedler's 15th assist on the season. And for Ellie Wanuka, she gets the Raiders on the board. And that is her fourth goal. So, as I was saying, outside of Paige Peltier, you have some other goal scorers, but no one near the rate of Paige this season. As we said, leading this state, but Creighton Durham Hall will take that. But this Egan team, a scrappy one, as Sherry Lenz put it, as they have possession. Aaron Redekop awaiting the throw in. The one downside to a field like this, it doesn't give you a lot of space to wind up on a throw in. Creighton Durham Hall looking for a counter. Tierney looking to hook up with Page. And Egan's back line will deny them the opportunity. Sydney Coldman boots it out of play. Creighton Durham Hall with the throw in, but Egan will happily concede that as it prevents the Creighton Durham Hall offense from getting an odd woman rush. Upfield pass to Peltier once again deflected by the Wildcats. Sherry Lenz really praised the Egan back line, especially the work of Olivia Miller, the center back in that last line of defense. And here's the crafty Paige Peltier, the Notre Dame commit. An All-State All-American last year. Centering pass, shot wide right. So Creighton Durham Hall going out on the offensive in a big way in the first half. They've had a couple of three key chances 
They've cashed in on one off the corner. Set up by Fiedler. So Erica Collins with a pretty busy performance, pretty busy day so far mining the net. As I was saying, Paige Peltier, All-State All-American. She's considered the favorite to win Miss Soccer in Class 2A this season. She had 24 goals last year, and with four games to go, there's a good chance that she could crack 30. Egan, they've threatened a couple of times. They haven't put a clean shot in yet, but Julia Barker hopes to change that. And once again, that back line, Amy Fiedler intervened for the deflection. Challenge won by the Raiders. We get to see a little more handling ability for Paige Beltier. She shirks through a couple of defenders. Leaks out to Emery Johnson. Emery with a look. Erica Collins with another stop. It looked like it was going to slice wide left, but once again, the Raiders keeping the pressure on the Wildcats. And even if you don't get goals out of that, it's an encouraging sign for Rosie Malone Pavonli and this CDH team. Creighton Durham Hall not giving Egan any breathers, and an Egan player stumbles. That's number 15, Katie Connolly. Aggressive in the midfield, according to Sherry Lenz. Now Egan. Pass was a little too far, and Creighton will take over. Soccer the way it was meant to be called, live and outside. Wouldn't you agree, Bonnie? I would totally agree. <laughs> and Egan a foul awards Creighton Durham Hall a free kick. Caitlin Mulcahy near midfield, looking for Peltier. She got her, but the ball ricocheted off Peltier, and it's gonna go right back to number 15, Ella Wackman. Peltier trying to chase it down, and is unable to do so. As we noted, the Egan staff, all U of M graduates, they played together, and when Sherry Lenz saw the opportunity, she Used it in the words of the Blues Brothers to bring the band back together. Lindsay Dare, Ali Campanen, Maggie Falwell, and Alyssa Freetag Bolo are some of the members who came to Egan. And Lenz was the director of coaching at the Wave Soccer Club in Egan, and she always wanted the opportunity to coach in high school. And I'd say this is a pretty prestigious position. When you look at Egan's history, again, bronze medalists last year in Class 2A, beating Stillwater in the third place game. Emery Johnson with a challenge, but there's no one up the middle. And a foul is called, I believe, on Amy Fiedler. So free kick for the Wildcats. Throw in on the near side for the Wildcats. Emma Yeager, number three. Fiedler, another takeover. And another foul on the Raiders. You can hear the wind gusting a little bit. Here's Olivia Miller. Usually finishes set pieces. And 
and that will stay Egan Ball. Sherry Lenz really praised Olivia Miller's ability to finish set pieces. And compared to her soccer club duties, Lenz said coaching this high school team is almost like a college. And Lenz is familiar with the condensed season for high school soccer, a graduate of Champlin Park. Amy Fiedler pushed from behind by Lauren Rockford. So a free kick awarded to the Raiders. And just like that, Egan takes over again. Egan has been threatening. They haven't put a serious shot on goal yet. Olivia Calla does have a couple of saves. This Egan team was ranked in the top 10 in the early part of the season when they won five of the first six. They've fallen out of the ranking since then. Creighton Durham Hall, they're on the cusp, but again, the big question for them, can they get through into the state tournament round? They were stopped by Wyzetta last year in section play and soccer, much like hockey, one of those sports where crazy things can happen. What you think will happen in a game Ends up being the opposite, and this will be our first corner for the Wildcats. No, it was a throw, and I thought it was a corner. Tough to tell from here. And Paige Peltier just clears it away. Erica Collins leaks out. No real risk of doing that, or doing so, since nobody from Creighton Durham Hall was in striking distance. Amy Fiedler with the challenge, was looking for Peltier, and the ball was deflected by Olivia Miller. Creighton will try again. They do hook up with Peltier. She shakes the defender, Paige, fires, goal! Goal number 29 for Paige Peltier. And it comes in the sixteenth minute. Way to go, Raiders, keep it going. What a piece of work by Paige Peltier. The initial volley to her was deflected. She adjusted properly. Shook a defender and Egan, like many other teams this season, probably wondering how in the world do we stop Paige? <laughs> so Paige Peltier with a goal, Ellie Wanuka with a goal, and the Raiders with a 2 0 lead. And it's not like Egan's been overpowered. They have threatened a few times. So they've been able to get the ball on the attacking end of the field. It's Creighton Durham Hall who's been finishing on these big plays. And here come the Wildcats, looking for a charge. It's Morgan Eckerley. Creighton Durham Hall will boot that away. There's Paige Peltier, again she'll clear it. And we saw the benefit of that just a couple minutes ago. Even if nobody is downfield, what it does do is allow Creighton Durham Hall to get their offense set up. To get the front lines in position, we're going to have a substitution on the Wildcats. Emily Cronkite goes out. Barger goes in. And that's the news. <laughs> I'm sure Emily has heard that more than once. Emily Cronkite, that is. As you know, unlimited substitutions at the high school level. No stoppage time since the clock counts down. And this has been the difference of the game. No foul caught, we play on. Egan, they can get into the attacking third. They've had trouble sustaining an attack, and whoa, look out! Olivia Calla falls on it. 
and barely avoids a collision with Lauren Rockford, number 19. That could have been scary, but we play on. Again, though, Egan can get in the attacking side, but they haven't been able to set up the way Creighton Durham Hall has. But Egan, not a pushover, as we said. Bronze medalists last year. New coaching staff and a lot of new pieces, a lot of new faces, as most of the talent from a year ago graduated. But Sherry Lenz and her crew, happy to take on that challenge. And all Gopher staff, which fits nicely with this Gophers graduate. 10 years ago, I graduated college. Can you believe it? Here's Fiedler. Fiedler to Peltier, Paige fires and didn't have a great lane there, but this is Paige we're talking about, so <laughs> if there's anyone that can make something out of nothing, it's Peltier. Didn't get it there, but Rosie Malone Pofoni, I'm sure doesn't mind. You want to stay on the attack and remind Egan that you mean business. Creighton Durham Hall certainly showing that in the early part of this game. And as we noted in the open, with some of those lofty goal totals out of Paige Peltier in recent games, this is a team that can score in bunches. They've scored nine goals three times. Armstrong, Forest Lake, and Irondale. They beat Moundsview five to four. Back to action, had to do a quick little technical timeout, as Bonnie put it. Olivia Calla gets another stop. We improvise, we do things on the fly here on TSB television broadcasts. There's a deep ball from number eight, Julia Barger. As I was about to say on Creighton Durham Hall before Bonnie required my assistance, They've scored nine goals three times this season. They lead Section 6AA. They average 4.1 goals a game, and that is among the highest totals in the state. Of course, having the leading scorer in the state helps considerably. Go Raiders! 19.25 left. In the first half, Creighton Durham Hall up 2-0 over the Egan Wildcats. And the Raiders looking to go on the offensive again. On you, on you. No, no. We're going to have an Egan throw in, but not before substitution. Ellie Doherty going in for Ella Wackman. As Emma Yeager awaits the throw in. And once again, Creighton Durham Hall's back line, they've done a good job denying Egan any real sustained threat on offense. This has been the story for the first 20 minutes. 
Another goal kick coming up for Kala. Raiders trying to get on the move. Paige Belt here in the front lines. Look at her speed, she's taking off. Fires a dribbler and Collins just got a piece of it. Well, it was close anyway. I thought Collins touched it, but Paige Peltier was wide right. Still another scare on the part of Creighton Durham Hall. Here's Fiedler. Didn't have much of an option there. Here's Peltier. That goes over the head of Collins and that is going to be a goal. Kate Maas, I believe, will get credit for it. And that was set up by Peltier. That was a tough angle and it went over the head of Erica Collins. And that ferocious, prolific Creighton Durham Hall offense is at it again. Paige Peltier, no stranger to setting up scoring opportunities. She had seven assists and depending on how they score that, she may have picked up her eighth. But I can tell you that Kate Maas finished the play and made it a three nothing game for the Raiders. Egan with the takeover. They've been looking for a strike at Cala and Queen Durham Hall, that back line, holds up again. Julia Barger just cannot break through to get a clean shot off. But a throw in is coming up. And Queen Durham Hall's back line, once again, keeping Egan from putting any sustained pressure on Creighton Durham Hall. Lauren Rockford was looking for Emily Cronkite up front. Another Egan throw and coming. And another substitution. Sarah Brecklin for Emma Yeager. Sophomore for junior. And Egan will get their first corner. And Sherry Lenz was highlighting the set piece play from the Wildcats as one of their strengths. They're going to get their first chance here. Creighton Durham Hall scored a goal off a set piece. We'll see if the Wildcats can do the same. It'll be on the far corner, number 10, Emily Cronkite. 
Usually the taker on these set pieces, she'll put it in play. And again, not a lot of space to wind up. It's a soft one. And that bounced off a couple of Eakin players and out of play. Creighton Durham Hall up three to nothing over the Egan Wildcats. A little bit of wind. Paige Peltier trying to catch up to the ball and Egan Nice job by number 14, Sydney Coleman. She was able to get it off of Peltier. And so Egan will hang on to it via the throw in. Wildcats, once again looking for an attack, but the pass from number five, Sarah Brecklin, intended for Barger. Can't find her target, Creighton Durham Hall with another clearance. And Egan has little choice but to send it to their keeper who bats it out of bounds. Erica Collins conceding a throw in. If for no other reason to give her Egan teammates a chance to sit up on the defensive end. Eleven minutes to go in the first half. Peltier pinned in the corner, and another throw in for the Raiders. Peltier again had nowhere to go. It was impressive since she was still able to get a shot off. It was saved by Collins. And Queen Durham Hall will again take over on a throw-in in the near side. Ellie Doherty. Peltier. Boxing out her defender, number 22, Olivia Miller. Oh, look for the cross and almost had it. Peltier almost found her target on the cross. Creighton has to adjust. Winuka. Player goes down for the Wildcats. That was Sydney Coleman. I'm not sure if that would have been a foul or not, but a break for the Wildcats as Creighton Durham Hall was threatening again. They already have a commanding 3 0 lead and one of the highest scoring teams in the state asserting their might here. As we said, this is a team that has scored nine goals three times. Do they have enough to get out of the section? We'll find out soon as we uh, enter the final week of regular season play for high school soccer. Next week is the last one, and Creighton Durham Hall will end the season with a couple of big tests. East Ridge, the team that isn't as strong as a year ago, but they did beat Stillwater last week, and then they will host Stillwater. So East Ridge and Stillwater on back-to-back -back days. The East Ridge game was originally scheduled for Tuesday, but thunderstorms put a stop to that. This field does have lights, of course. So the game against Stillwater, that will be a big one for conference implications. And then they will go on the road to play Park of Cottage Grove. For those wondering, the Wolfpack, five, five, and three. And Eastridge, four, six, and one. But again, one of those wins came against Stillwater.
So looking at the teams in Section 6-2A, Creighton-Durham Hall looks like they have enough, but we shall see. And Lakeville North and Rosemount, Egan and team in Section 3. That section a little different. Lakeville North got moved into Section 3 in several sports. Here comes Egan and a save by Kala. Egan got their first quality chance there. And that was a well-placed ball by number 10, Emily Cronkite. Kala able to react and adjust in time for the save, but we stay at 3-0 as a result. Green Durham Hall trying to go on the counter. As another wind gust comes through, it's a little bit of wind here. Green Durham Hall free kick, Caitlin Mulcahy with the honors. Rejected by Egan. And here's Kate Moz. And that ball is headed for the seats and into the parking lot. And it's going to bounce off a Jeep. It's okay, it hit the bumper. Six minutes and counting in the first half. Creighton Durham Hall up three nothing. Goals by Ellie Winuka, Paige Peltier, and Kate Moz. Egan with a couple of chances, but they have not been able to sustain an attack. Egan, they've been knocking on the door a few times. Green Durham Hall. Sends it into the cart. So a throw in for the Wildcats. And more substitutions coming in. Challenge won by the Wildcats, but Lauren Rockford had nowhere to go. She had a couple defenders behind her. So Egan will reset as they try to find some way to get a shot on goal. That Cretan back line doing its job. Morgan Eckerly trying to shake traffic. And that ball will be cleared by Mary Kate Kukurik. Paige Peltier shakes a defender, using that speed again. Now showcasing her ball handling. Puts a defender on the turf. She's tripped, still gets a shot off. She wanted a foul, won't get it. She was tripped, stumbled, and that allowed Erica Collins to swoop in for the save. Paige Peltier wanted a foul, doesn't get it. Now Egan with the counter. They got a one-on-one. -on -one. The shot is wide right. Lauren Rockford with the best chance all game for the Wildcats. Her shot goes wide right. Olivia Calla was able to swoop in. And Rockford, she had an open goal but could not convert. Creighton Durham Hall escapes with no damage. What a wild sequence of events that was. Let's go. 
Green Durham Hall to throw in. There's still plenty of time here for another goal. Peltier once again tripped. And she was fouled. So a PK coming up. And this is the worst case scenario for many opponents of Creighton Durham Hall. A penalty kick facing off. No, it was a goal kick. I thought it was a PK. So Paige Peltier, she's been banged up a couple of times, hasn't been able to draw a foul call. Still has a goal to her credit though, and Creighton Durham Hall still has a three nothing lead. Wildcats looking to counter again. Rockford catches up to it. She's not gonna have a good angle though. And that will roll harmlessly out of play. Lauren Rockford, a couple of times, has been knocking at the door. But unable to cash in. Something to keep an eye on though in the second half has Egan able to set up some good counters. It hasn't resulted in any goals. And oddly enough, they've been set up after some stingy challenges on Paige Peltier. Foul's called this time and a free kick for the Raiders. And I think we've seen enough out of Creighton Durham Hall's offense. We've seen enough out of their offense to understand how dangerous they can be. Another collision. Three players involved that time. Morgan Eckerly, Laura Newton, and a Creighton Durham Hall player. I think that was B.A. Ahern. No, that's number 20. Aaron Hannon. Just a sophomore, but she's making an appearance here. Less than a minute to go in the first half. And Creighton just trying to get a clearance here as they hope to keep Egan off the board. They don't want to give the Wildcats any momentum heading into the intermission. 25 seconds. And that middle line by Creighton Durham Hall doing a fine job. Paige Peltier trying to catch up to it. She may have a chance. Four seconds, shakes the defender. Got to get it off. She does, but wide left, we're out of time. What a crazy, exciting first half. Plenty of thrills, wild sequences, and a lot of high-flying action, but it's Creighton Durham Hall with the three-nothing lead over the Egan Wildcats as their offense is asserting their might here at Wingard Field in St. Paul. Three-nothing, Creighton Durham Hall over Egan, and if their offense continues this push, they may pick up their ninth win of the season. This is a scary, scary offense as we've seen. We'll see how Egan responds to it when we return. You're watching High School Girls Soccer. Across the Twin Cities Metro and beyond, TSB Television offers long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. It takes a lot of time and effort to give you this level of coverage. If you want to help out, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or paypal.me slash TSB television. Mike Beating here all by myself talking to myself. And we are ready to start the second half for high school girls soccer, Creighton Durham Hall and Egan. Creighton Durham Hall scoring three times in the first half. They hold a three nothing lead. That's how, what happens when you score three times and the other team doesn't. Those goals coming from Ellie Winuka, Paige Beltier, and Kate Moz. And Creighton Durham Hall looking to make a quick start as we flip the field. Paige Beltier, as we said, a goal already, had a couple more chances. She got tripped up a couple of times, nothing was called, so a couple of challenges by Egan. Otherwise, this game could be an even bigger deficit for the Wildcats. And for Egan, they've had a couple of chances, but on the part of Emily Rockford, 
Lauren Rockford, I should say. She's had a couple of looks, hasn't been able to put it in. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, it's the first of two games we're covering today. After this, we'll head down to Lakeville North as they host Stillwater in a rematch of last year's Class 2A quarterfinals. Stillwater won the season series a year ago. I should, well, they did win. They settled to a scoreless draw with the Panthers and then beat Lakeville North 2-0 in the quarterfinal round. So Creighton Durham Hall and that impressive attack of theirs. They've done a lot already, so they don't necessarily have to do anything more, but don't tell that to the Raiders or Rosie Malone Pavoni. As we said, Egan, they've made a couple of counters, so this is a team that could be in position. Ellie Winuka, who scored a goal already, off the corner from Amy Fiedler. And here comes Egan, looking for another chance. They won't get it. Julia Barger had a look, but that wasn't a great one. Goal kick for Olivia Calla. Another note on Paige Peltier, we noted she scored in nine of the team's 11 games this season. Scored six goals and a win over Forest Lake. And then in that 9-0 win over Irondale, four goals, three assists. Now granted, when you get to the playoffs, you won't have that opportunity to rack up numbers once you get to that semifinal round, but she's having one heck of a senior season. The Wildcats have won just once in their last seven games and they're in danger of making that one in their last eight. And we're going to have a corner. Egan's last win was against Farmington on the 19th. They've lost three in a row since. Corner in the near side. Egan with the dribbler. And they punch it in. They use the ground game to perfection. And I believe that goal will go to Sarah Brecklin. And Egan gets on the board. As we said, this Egan team had been knocking on the door and a corner kick pays off. We did confirm it was number five. Sarah Brecklin off the feed from Julia Barger, and it comes in the fifth minute. The fifth minute of the second half, that is. Barger with the assist, Brecklin with the goal. And that was set up on the corner kick. You don't see a lot of grounders or dribblers off of corners like that, but Egan staying on the ground and it paid off. But Creighton Durham Hall 
They're back on the attacking end, and we know what Paige Peltier can do. We've seen a couple of the other players step up as well. But Egan trying to storm their way back. And they have plenty of time to do it. Got to get that first goal. And you can get two more in 34 minutes. We know that much. But that young, scrappy team as Queen Durham Hall opts for a reset. That young, scrappy team using speed and finesse. That's going to be a foul. And that may or may not have been a good thing. It was Paige Peltier who was handling it. It will set up a free kick for Amy Fiedler. Oh, I thought it was going to go to Fiedler. Nope, instead she's going to hand it off to Caitlin Mulcahy, who traditionally takes the free kicks. But Peltier was the ball handler, so that may or may not have been a bad thing to get the foul call. You get the free kick, but it ends up going right into the hands of Erica Collins, who has made a boatload of big saves in the first half. Emery Johnson was looking for Peltier. Challenged at midfield as another gust of wind blows through. And not a lot to shield us from the wind here at Wingard Field in the Creighton Durham Hall. Not the biggest of facilities, but gives you that close up view and another Egan corner is coming up. They scored a goal the last time off of a set piece. And here's Emily Cronkite. Let's see what she does here. Egan went to the ground. Another low dribbler. And that sneaks past everybody. And that's going to open things up for Creighton Durham Hall. And it's a sprint race, a foot race with Bridget Tierney. And the ball will roll out of play. Creighton Durham Hall throw in, but nice work by Bridget Tierney to effectively flip the field. That's less of a strategy in soccer compared to the other football, but good piece of work by Tierney to take the corner kick and flip the field to give Creighton Durham Hall a chance to set up an offense. Here's Fiedler. Winuka with the dribbler. And Collins will scoop it up. Erica Collins has been busy throughout this game. Action at midfield. And that's going to be a foul on Fiedler as she gave a little bit of a push to Taylor Grebin. 31 minutes and 30 seconds. Left in regulation. Egan with a free kick. Right into the head of Caitlin Mulcahy. The Wildcats still on the attack. Katie Connolly was looking for a target. And gives it up to Paige Belt here. This is a dangerous scenario. Paige runs one defender and a collision. And they are going to call a foul. So a free kick awarded to Creighton Durham Hall. And Amy Fiedler will put it in play this time. I know that you want to stop Peltier, but you don't want to give up a free kick in the process. Fiedler was looking for Peltier on the backside. Another break for the Wildcats, though, as they are taking an aggressive approach to stop Paige Peltier in transition. Fiedler finds Peltier. Flag goes up. It's offside. This will not count. Right idea, but Paige was just a little bit ahead of the defense. Oh, 
Paige Belt's here, though. She's looking. It's like when you're watching Rocket League and you have all those attacking chances. Always in position to knock one in. So even if you don't get it, you're knocking on the door, you're lurking, waiting for that strike, and Peltier almost had it there. Now Egan with a throw in. As they try to work their way back, that's Karina Hansen. And we'll have a throw in on the near side as the ball goes into the parking lot near Wingard Field. And it will be Creighton Durham Hall throwing it in. But that is not a certainty. Egan with the takeover, but they don't have much of a lane there. Creighton's back line, including Caitlin Mulcahy holding serve there. Egan trying to get a shot. They're not going to get a clean one off. And easy pickings for Olivia Kalla. Kalla, Kukurek, and Peltier are the captains for the Creighton Durham Hall Raiders. As we noted earlier, trying to get out of section six. They had that big win over Robbinsdale Armstrong, nine to nothing. Earlier this season, they blanked the defending state champions in class A, Matamidai, three to nothing on the road. Had that 5-1 loss to Hill Murray. Free kick for the Wildcats. It's a boomer. And out of play. That was Olivia Miller. Creighton with the takeover. Soft pass to Peltier. Egan's defense gets set up and Peltier just boots it to Bia Ahern. And Egan will let that roll out for throw in. And a substitution coming in. Egan on the move. That shot bounced off a Creighton Durham Hall defender. I believe it went off of Winuka. And the Raiders once again with a chance to flip the field. Here's Peltier. She's got a lot of traffic. Puts one defender to the turf in Miller. And this time the Egan back line stays with her to pinch off Peltier. They don't give her a chance up the middle. But Egan will concede a throw in. And Greta Gehirin will put it in play. Raiders will try again. This time it's Wackman. Egan clears it away again as they try to keep Creighton Durham Hall out of the score column. A goal here would certainly seal a win for the Raiders. After Egan worked oh so hard just to get on the board and keep themselves in this. They still trail three to one. Peltier, little shake and bake. 
Stays in bounds and right at the goal. Crosses to number nine. And Emery Johnson had a great look, maybe waited a little too long. In any event, Egan was able to intervene. And once again, they escape with no damage. A lot of close calls in the second half. Egan has thwarted them off. But this Raiders team, they want to put the exclamation point as they have so many times this season. A team with arguably the state's top player. And another throw in for the Wildcats. Just one corner for the Raiders, but that corner did result in the goal by Winuka. Egan with three, they cashed in on one of those corners as well. But the goal that got Brecklin on the board. Battle for control at midfield. Peltier to Fiedler. And that was number 16, Kate Moss putting on the brakes, won't catch up to the ball in time. Creighton Durham Hall. They've got something to play for in the one seed, Minneapolis Southwest not far behind them in the QRF. And with a couple of big conference games next week in East Ridge and Stillwater. Again, East Ridge doesn't have the strongest of records, but they did pick up a win against Stillwater, one of the top teams in Class 2A. The Raiders have a good chance, an opportunity, if you will, to seal that one seed. That's what they're trying to do. Because getting that one seed gives you home field throughout the postseason in the section round. Egan, they're in a fight with Hastings if you go by QRF. Hastings with a better record, but Egan picking up a bunch of big wins early. For what it's worth, the Wildcats will more than likely get home field for at least the first round, but they would have to face Rosemount if the season ended today. So that's what the Wildcats are facing. Back on, here we go. Egan and Rosemount did play each other earlier this season. They only played each other once in the conference, and that was a 1 0 win by the Irish. Here's Paige Peltier trying to go on the attack again. Ball's loose! Peltier picks it up. Collins. Erica Collins all over it. Couple of big saves. She stopped Peltier. It's still on the attacking side and Erica Collins. Wow, she stopped Paige Peltier, she stopped Winuka. Kate Maz I think had a chance at it. This score does not reflect the beauty, the impressiveness of Erica Collins. This could be a much larger deficit if it wasn't for her play today. But a foul is called on the Wildcats and a free kick coming up. Raiders with a good chance here to set up on another attack with 20-28 left in the second half. Creighton Durham all up three to nothing. They've had many more chances than that. Fiedler. Well, the official had not signaled to start play yet. Fiedler wanted to go. Ready? 
Now she gets a signal. Peltier. Thank got a piece of it, but it goes right back to Collins. How many chances has Paige Peltier had in this game? She did cash in on one of them, though. And more importantly, her Raiders are up 3-1. Go Raiders! And it's a little windy here. Thank goodness for windscreens. And that'll be a throw in. Now we're back to midfield. If you just joined us, three first half goals from the Raiders and a bevy of second half saves by Erica Collins. Egan scored once. Sarah Brecklin off a feed from Julia Barger that was set up by a corner kick from Emily Cronkite. Egan with another chance. They take the shot from deep and it bounces out of play. That was Ashley Rosser in the attempt. Three to one. And there will be the boys coming out to this field. It's a girls boys double header, but we gotta go to Lakeville North. If you're watching this on YouTube, still any chance you get to see Paige Peltier before she goes to Notre Dame. Look at that footwork. As she's shaking defenders again. She's got Maz. Egan player intervenes and will boot it out into the parking lot. So another throw in. I will say this, Egan doing a good job overall avoiding the corners. They're not letting Creighton Durham Hall set up corner kicks. There have been a lot of throw ins on the attacking side, but just one corner. Cross from Peltier to Tierney and Tierney couldn't get a good look at that. Didn't have the best angle on that shot, goes out of play. Now that's what I call teamwork. Erica Collins getting her shoe tied by an Egan teammate. I can't see the number. I'm thinking it's Miller who's trying to retie the shoelaces. It is Olivia Miller. You don't see that often. I've seen players tie their own shoes. I haven't seen teammates do the honors. An amusing footnote, no pun intended. Sixteen forty-five left in the second half. Creighton Durham Hall still with a three-one lead. Egan, bronze medalists, and there's no reason to think they wouldn't be a contender in section three. That section did get a little bit tougher with Lakeville North getting reassigned. Northfield classed up in several sports this year. So in response, Lakeville North got shifted from section one to section three. So that puts Lakeville North in the same group as some of their big rivals in the South Suburban. Rosemount. We mentioned Egan. Egan looking for a counter, so only one of those teams will get out of that group and into the state tournament. So that section three bracket's gonna be a lot of fun to watch. Hastings. No slouch either in the Metro East. Good step, Ellie. Make a run. Here come the Wildcats. Barger was looking for a target up front. Creighton Durham Hall able to clear it. Here's Barger again. Barger with a dribbler. That's picked up by Calla. Would have been out of play anyway.
Wildcats. There's Barger once again. Trying to find an option up front. And that was last touched by the Raiders, so Egan will pick up another corner. This will be their fourth. And this is one of those opportunities they got to convert, you think, if they want a good chance of storming their way back. Kala couldn't handle it. Ball's still live, and Kala does fall on it. That was a corner Egan needed to put in, you'd think, to have a good chance. Although earlier this season, I covered Tartan St. Thomas Academy, and STA scored two goals in the span of less than a minute to force a 2-2 tie, so it's not a done deal yet. Flag stayed down. Well, Flag did go up, but was offside. It looked offside from here. Went off the goalpost anyway. It looked like Lauren Rockford was just ahead of the defense. Manuka was looking for Peltier, and once again, Egan, this has been their strategy, especially in the second half, first half as well. Anytime Paige Peltier's near the ball, just boot it out of play, let the Raiders throw it in. And Rosie Malone Pavoni will use this opportunity to get a few subs in, including B.A. Hearn and Aaron Hannon. A lot of talented athletes have made their way through this school at Creighton Durham Hall. Fiedler takes a centering pass, fires a one hopper that is scooped up by Erica Collins as Egan looks to put the pressure on. 11.20 left, if they can get another goal here, and that foot race is gonna be won by Kala as Egan was trying to pass up field to Morgan Eckerley. Execution and finishing plays. That is what Sherry Lenz feels will help carry this Egan team through the second half of the year. And again, a new system and a lot of new faces compared to last year's bronze medalists. Doesn't happen often where you get a coaching change after a successful campaign, but around here, high school sports, you're not coaching for the dollars. Egan awaiting a throw in as more subs come in. And another throw in coming up. With 10 minutes to go. That goes off of Winuka, and a foul will be called on Egan with less than 10 minutes to play. So, Creighton Durham all, they've had a couple of chances in the second half, but. Haven't been able to extend their lead. That being said, they won't mind this either. A goal kick allows Olivia Kalla to eat up more time. As Creighton Durham Hall 
in a section that is very much up for grabs. Same with section three. When you look at the caliber of teams in that field. Creighton Durham Hall forcing the turnover. And Egan will send that one back to midfield. Rosie Malone Pavoni, or somebody, that wasn't Rosie, but somebody from the Creighton Durham Hall side. Limit about an apparent no call there. That may have been Rosie. That was a rather animated expression. Over by the Creighton Durham Hall bench. Egan with their fifth corner of the game. And that sails past everybody. Egan sends that one out of play. So the Wildcats trying their best to get the ball, get pressure on Olivia Calla, put pressure at the net. But outside of that one corner, Creighton Durham Hall is withstood every challenge. That ball sails over the fence. Calla will chase that down. Raiders fans urging on the purple and gold clad athletes out here at Wingard Field. Soccer, lacrosse, and lower level football games all here. Speaking of football, the 1999 and 2009 state championship teams will be honored at the homecoming football game on Friday when Creighton Durham Hall hosts Moundsview. Both teams coming off a loss there. Creighton Durham Hall trying to set something up for Paige Peltier. Pass was off the mark, and Egan will send it away. Creighton Durham Hall, I have to imagine, won't be as aggressive here with 6.15 to go. Trying to keep Egan from knocking it in. And for the most part, they've done just that. Egan did score once, but as we noted, the Egan team went off to a flying start. Since then, they have not scored more than one goal. The last time they put up a multi-goal game was September 7th, an 8-0 win over Owatonna. Egan did get a 3-0 win over Eastridge, a 4-1 win over Blake. Tied with Eaton Prairie. Egan looking for one last burst of life and one last gasp and Taylor Grebin, her shot was wide left, less than five minutes to play. Now, Creighton Durham Hall making a substitution. Getting it in before the five minute window. If Creighton Durham Hall makes any more substitutions at this point, they will stop the clock. Part of that rule put in by the National Federation of High Schools to prevent a time-wasting ploy as it's described in the rule book. 
which means any substitution under the five minute mark will stop the clock. Battle for control won by the Wildcats, but they're running out of time. And that's not gonna get it done. They tried an upfield pass, but it was too far and scooped up by Calla, which will eat up more time as Creighton Durham Hall looks to pick up another win. Egan, unless they can find one more burst, they will suffer their fourth straight loss. Creighton Durham Hall they knocked off Woodbury on Thursday, two to nothing on the road. And even though their offense is largely centered on Peltier with their 29th goal this season coming today, they've proven they can win all sorts of games. They've won your low scoring ones. They beat Roseville one nothing, Woodbury two nothing, and. As we've seen, they can handle some of the other opponents that maybe aren't at their tier with Armstrong, Irondale, Forest Lake, all 9 nothing wins. That's what happens when you have a goal score, and that was a heads-up play by Olivia Calla. There was an Egan player right there. Calla, as, as you know, aware that she can use her hands, and, and she definitely got a hand from the Raiders fans. You can use your hands as long as you stay in the keeper's box, and that's going to be a foul on Egan. Free kick for Creighton Durham Hall, and a chance to eat up more clock here with 2.22 left in regulation. So Creighton Durham Hall looks like they're going to pick up win number nine on the season. Egan will lose their fourth straight, but they are a team that could be a dark horse in Section 3. So don't count out the Wildcats, even though they look a lot different from a year ago. And for Paige Belt here... She scored a goal, might have had an assist on another one. She certainly had a couple of chances. That time she stripped clean by number 14 of the Wildcats, Sydney Coleman. The Paige Belt here doing a fantastic job, even though she only has one goal today. Her work on offense, putting pressure on Egan and really forcing Egan to adjust in a big way to stop her. There were no easy opportunities. And Creighton Durham Hall will get a corner here. So Egan this will almost certainly seal the win because Egan wouldn't have enough time to set up a counter here with just over a minute left. But Amy Fiedler will have a chance to give the Raiders a stamp on this win. And that kick sails past everybody. But that's all right. Fiedler will get one assist for sure off the goal from Winuka back in the sixth minute. And in Creighton Durham Mall, even though they weren't able to, to add on to their total, it's going to be a well-fought win against a team that has a lot of youth. And that's going to be a free kick for the Wildcats. 30 seconds left. Egan, again, they'll drop their fourth straight. Not a one-goal game today, but this is a team that could be a dark horse if they can get the execution, finishing those plays. It's a speedy team. We've seen that. And they've played some of the top teams well, including Rosemount. This is a team to keep an eye on as Creighton Durham Hall just clears it. And that'll put an end to this one as time expires. Creighton Durham Hall, they don't score in the second half, but they keep Egan from threatening. They did give up that one goal in the 45th minute, but that was all. And with that, it's a final. Creighton Durham Hall wins 3-1 to one over the Egan Wildcats. Goals coming from Winuka, Paige Peltier, and... Kate Maas unofficially. Egan, their one goal coming from Sarah Brecklin back in the 45th minute, but it was Creighton Durham Hall. Sure 
who held off the charge. So that does it here from Wingard Field, but we will try to get a post-game chat before we wrap things up. You're watching High School Girls Soccer. Creighton Durham Hall with the 3-1 win over Egan. Across the Twin Cities Metro and beyond, TSB Television offers long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. It takes a lot of time and effort to give you this level of coverage. If you want to help out, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB Television or paypal.me slash TSB Television. And joining me are Ellie Winuka and Paige Peltier, two of the goal scorers today for Creighton Durham Hall as they pick up win number nine on the season, a 3-1 win over Egan. Ellie, we'll start with you. You got things started off a corner from Amy Fiedler, and you know, Fiedler doing a great job as a setup artist, I think 15 assists on the year, but how did that first corner set the tempo for you today? Um, I think it really got the energy going in our team and made us keep pushing forward throughout the game. Yeah, really set the tone in the beginning, I think. And, you know, we've talked a lot about Paige. If you follow Creighton Durham Hall, you know, you've had a lot of highlights this year. But I think you and uh, Maz reminded us that there are some other goal scorers out there today. But what has this season been like, getting a chance to see Paige do what she's been able to do and then, you know, to see, uh, have you uh, chip in the way you did today? Um, well, it's been awesome to see Paige. She always knows how to slice and dice through everyone and score, and we kind of count on her a lot. But, yeah, Kate scored too, so, like, our whole team can score, and, yeah, we work well together and everything. Yep. Yep. Paige, goal number 29 this season. You lead the state in that mark. I know you... Your college commitment, that's all done. You're waiting to go to Notre Dame, but did you imagine you would have a season like this? I didn't. I mean, I for, at the beginning of the season, I was like, I'm going to do my best to try to get more goals than I did last year because I always have to ha set a higher standard for myself. But some of these games, I just scored more than I thought I would, and it's been great. Well, you scored once today. Had a chance to add a couple more. Uh, <laughs> And I'll say this, I think it says a lot about you that Egan got a little more aggressive. It's, it's not, it, on their end, it seemed like the only way to stop you was to <laughs> show their physicality a little bit. But that being said, you're one away from 30. What does that say about your progression? Um, I would say that I just have to keep going like throughout these next, I think I, we have four more games in the season. So we have to keep going as a team. And if I get to 30, that's great. But I just want our team to win. And you did score one, so let's not forget that. And that goal uh, showcased what Ellie spoke of, the uh, slice and dice, the footwork, the ball handling. Uh, how did you create that goal of yours? And I know for you it might seem like just another goal, but for the rest of us, that was a pretty impressive piece of work. Thank you. Um, I think Amy played the ball. Was it Amy that played the ball? Yeah, Amy played it to me, and I tried to use my speed to get to the ball first, and then I cut the defender and finished with my left to the low corner. Last year, you were stopped by Wyzetta in section play. This year, you hold the inside track to the one seed. As you know, of course, the playoffs are a whole different animal. But what's the mood like this year, and how are you going to try to get over that hump and maybe make your way into state? Um, I think we're really going for the win this year against Wyzetta, and we got the team spirit to do it. So I think we really can this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we have lots of energy this year and our team connects super well together. Like we're all like a big family. So I'm just hoping that we can pull through and beat Wyzetta. Well, we'll see what happens. You know, it could be Wyzetta, it could be anyone else. Right. Well, it could be anyone in section six. We, yeah. The seeds aren't out yet, but uh, how much fun has this season been to have a nine and three mark and to see Paige <laughs> closing in on 30 goals? Um, it's been awesome. We've all had a really great season. The whole team has bonded this year and everything's just been great watching everyone grow throughout the season. I just don't want the season to end. I love these girls and I hope that we can make it as far as we can. You're not saying that because they're right behind us, are you? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> so that was legitimate. She truly loves this team. Uh, you want to say hi to anybody? Uh, hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, Bridget. Hi, V. Hi, everyone else. <laughs> Hi, Mom and Dad. Hi, Uncle Ted. <laughs> well, Paige, if you like to set the bar high, I don't know what Notre Dame will bring you, maybe 35, 40 goals, but that's a, that's a ways away from now. Congrats on the win today, though, and we'll see if it does help you propel into state. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.
That's Ellie Winuka and Paige Peltier and the rest of the Raiders who are behind us here. <laughs> that wraps up our coverage here from Wingard Field. For the rest of our crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.